2022 was another incredible season, and I want to start by thanking all of you for joining us on our adventures here on YouTube. So in this video, I'm going to take a look back at the goals that we had originally set for 2022 to see how we did on those before giving you a preview of what's to come in the season ahead. Now, you might remember from the similar video that I posted around this time last year that I had originally planned to participate in two key events, starting with a seven day stage race in the country of Georgia. And of course, I finally finished producing the video series from this incredible adventure, which turned out exactly how I had hoped it would. And thank you so much for all of the incredibly positive feedback so far, both in the comments on YouTube and in the personal messages that you've all been sending me. And if you've yet to watch that, then maybe pause this and go ahead and start that now instead, because there will be spoilers. This series follows a very similar format to my series Racing Namibia from the race that I did previously with Racing the Planet. In fact, I wanted it to feel almost like season two of that program, at the risk of it potentially feeling a little bit repetitive. But of course, the location was completely different, and I was able to introduce you to a brand new cast of characters. And my race result was also a little bit different this time as well. My goal for Georgia had been to make it on the podium, and I did manage to finish in second place, behind Florian in the lead and in front of Matthew, both of whom you got to know throughout the series. Now, earlier in the year, I had also launched a new series of weekly vlogs, documenting my training and my travels throughout the season, which I called my training diaries. I wasn't sure exactly how long I'd be able to keep this up, but I did manage to put out an episode pretty much every week around the same time for about 26 weeks, even while traveling in Georgia. Now, after my race, I pretty much flew straight home and I only had a couple of weeks to recover before having to pivot and to start my training again in the mountains in preparation for my second big event of the year, UTMB. But first, Audrey and I headed down to Colorado to support some friends who were running the Hard Rock 100 in the San Juan Mountains. Getting into this race is really difficult and it's been a long-term goal for me, but pacing it is almost as fun. It was actually my second time going to Hard Rock and this time I paced my friend Ken through the final leg of the race. And you can watch it all in the 42 minute documentary that I published shortly after on my channel. Audrey also got a chance to bag her first 14er, Mount Sneffels, and I've got a short film about that on my channel as well. On the way back, we made a stop in Wyoming to run a 60 kilometer loop around Grand Teton National Park. Now this was probably one of the most beautiful and scenic routes, mile for mile, that I've ever run. And I'm still trying to find time to edit the film from this run, which will probably be up to an hour long. But in the meantime, you can see a preview in episode 19 of my training diaries, in case you missed it. And we then only had about a week at home before leaving again for France, where we'd spend the entire month of August in lead up to UTMB. We headed directly to Chamonix so that we could prepare to start the following day on our big week of training as we fast packed the Tour de Mont Blanc, which is basically the same route that we'd be racing at the end of the month. And as I said in the film, I was almost more excited about fast packing the route than I was about racing UTMB. And if I had to choose just one, I'd say that fast packing the route might actually be a more rewarding experience given that you can go at your own pace and of course enjoy all the incredible food along the way, not to mention the views, many of which during UTMB you ended up missing while running at night. We spent the next couple of weeks finishing our training and tapering before returning to Chamonix for the week of the race. Now I'd been to Chamonix a few times before in lead up to other races and Audrey had run TDS, which is part of the UTMB series, but this was the first time that either of us had run the full race. Of course it was extra special given that we could both start the race together. And the film was much better as a result of having both of our perspectives from the race as well. I'm blown away by the feedback on this video, which has already gained over 500,000 views in just the first three months since it was published. And it continues to get more than 2,000 views a day. I guess it's no coincidence that it's one of the biggest and most popular races in the world, which probably tells me what kind of events I should be focusing on if I want to continue to grow my channel. And the race itself was also a success for both of us. I wouldn't say that either of us really achieved our A goal in terms of finishing times, but just finishing a race like this your first time is a real accomplishment. And in hindsight, my goal of running sub 30 hours was probably unrealistic anyway, given that I really only had a month of dedicated training in the mountains following my race in Georgia, which itself had been mostly flat and runnable. 
Now, if I was to ever run UTMB again, I would definitely focus on it wholeheartedly with at least a few months of dedicated training in the mountains. While we were in Chamonix, I met Louis, the race director of a race on the Azores Islands, which led me to an opportunity for one more big adventure before the season was over. So I took it pretty easy in September and started again training in October and November, both back in the gym doing my strength training and out on the trails before heading to the Azores Islands for two weeks in early December. There I raced the 60K Epic Azores Trail Race before spending the rest of my time exploring not only Sao Miguel, but a few of the other nearby islands. We had some pretty interesting weather, so the race was quite difficult and, well, I ended up having some navigational issues as well. I won't give away too much here though because I will also still be editing a likely hour plus long film for my entire adventure there, which I hope to have time to finally get to in April. But you can get a preview of all of that in a video that I published late last year on my channel as well. So in total for the year, I covered just over 3,500 kilometers by foot with 112,000 meters of elevation gain. Back in 2021, I had set a somewhat arbitrary target of trying to hit 50,000 subscribers here on YouTube by the end of the year but I headed into 2022 at just 42,000. Still a huge increase though from the 20,000 that I had at the start of 2021. Now last year I managed to add another roughly 20,000 subscribers and I'm now at just over 65,000 and I've been gaining about 3,000 new subscribers each month. So my next target will be the 100,000 subscriber mark, which I'm hoping I might be able to hit by the end of the year or shortly after so that I can get that coveted silver YouTube plaque, but we'll see. I'm also really excited though to see my supporting channel memberships continue to grow because this money does really help to support the work that I'm doing. So part of my strategy moving forward will be to continue to publish all of my films for free of course, but to then also publish supporting content like gear breakdowns and detailed explanations of logistics exclusively for my channel members at a cost of roughly a cappuccino each month. So if you'd like to become a channel member, you can do so by hitting the join button from within a web browser and buy me a coffee. We also launched a newsletter late last year, and I've been sending this out weekly at most, usually whenever I publish a new video, along with links to some other resources and YouTube videos that I think you might enjoy. And you can sign up for that by visiting the link below. Now our season this year is getting a jump start just a few days from now while I'm recording this, when we'll be heading down to Argentina to start our adventure in Patagonia. And there we'll be joining a group that we're hosting with Trova Trip as we spend eight days hiking and taking in some of the most incredible views that the region has to offer. Audrey and I are then gonna have another week on our own to spend fast packing in Torres del Paine on the O Circuit, which will be the first new film that I'll be producing in 2023. A month later, I'll be heading to Arizona with a group of friends to run the Grand Canyon rim to rim to rim. Now I did this route once before, but it was quite a few years ago. So it's time that I go back and with a much better camera this time. I'd filmed the video from that trip on an early generation GoPro and my storytelling left a little bit to be desired as well. In May, Audrey and I will then be racing the Wild Horse Traverse 54K in nearby Kelowna, part of the Pace Trail Running Series. So if you're looking for what looks to be a fun and fairly runnable 50K in British Columbia, then we'd love to see you there as well. Now in June, I'll then be heading to England where I'll spend the entire month in the Lake District training for and preparing to run the Bob Graham Round while living there and working remotely in the evenings. This is a 106 kilometer loop with 8,200 meters of elevation gain, which traverses 42 peaks. And to be considered a finisher, you've got to do it all in under 24 hours. Bob Graham himself was 42 when he successfully completed the 42 peak challenge and it's now become a bit of a thing to do it when you turn 42. I'll be turning 42 myself at the end of June, so I can't think of a better way to celebrate. Audrey will be joining me for the last week as well, and I've already managed to assemble a pretty good crew, including some old friends that I'm looking forward to reconnecting with, and some new ones that I'll be getting to know as well. Now I plan on documenting the entire process, so you're going to not only learn about the history of the round, but you'll also see more on-course footage that you might have probably ever seen before, along with what I hope will be a very authentic representation of fell running culture and the community that surrounds it. We're then heading to Switzerland so that Audrey can run her first goal race of the year, the 100K Eiger Ultra Trail by UTMB. 
I'll just be getting going again after recovering from the Bob Graham round, so I'll be there to film and support Audrey while she films her own perspective of the race. And this will actually be the first film that we make focusing on Audrey's experience, so it should be a lot of fun. The first week of August, we're then going to be working with a team called Vegabond Trails to once again fast pack the Tour de Mont Blanc with the group. This trip sold out in less than 24 hours after we opened registration last year, which was actually a huge surprise. So I'm really sorry to anyone who might have been left disappointed. We'll hopefully be doing it again in 2024, but I think that at least a few of you did manage to get in with other groups that Vegabond is leading, which is great. And I know that our friend Billy Yang is going to be hosting a group with them this year as well. Now the rest of our month in August we've yet to solidify, but we're hoping to continue our training by doing some fast packing in the Julian Alps, probably doing the Julian Alps Traverse route. And this will be training for our final big adventure in Europe as we then head to Spain to run the Pyrenees Stage Run, a seven day, 220 kilometer race through the Pyrenees. And Audrey and I will actually be racing this as a team for the first time. It's also the first time that either of us will be running a supported stage race meaning that we won't have to carry all of our gear and food for the week. Instead, we'll be staying in hotels each night and eating really good meals. And I'll be collaborating with the race directors there, like I did with Racing the Planet. So the film should be a good one. Now this will be Audrey's goal race for the season. So after that, she'll have a chance to recover and to take it easy for the rest of the year. But for me, it will just be a training run. Because a couple of weeks later, we're heading to Colorado to pick up a truck camper from our friends at Ross Monster so that we can spend the next few weeks in Moab, where I'll be doing some heat training, in advance of running the Moab 240. At 240 miles, this will be my longest race to date, although with significantly less elevation change than Tour de Jean or the Swiss Peaks 360K, so I'm hoping to finish in less time than in either of those two events. Audrey will be using the Baja from Ross Monster during the race as well as she crews me throughout the week, which is going to be a game changer for us both. And I'll be working with the media team there as well, so this film is going to be an epic. So as you can see, we've got just a massive season planned of both adventures and content. And I'll be documenting all of this in real time in another season of my training diaries, although probably only two episodes per month this time instead of four. We're so thankful to have the support this season as well of a great family-run business based here in North Vancouver called Cove Continuity Advisors as part of their Inspire Me sponsorship program. Their goal is to inspire others to live a healthy and adventurous life, which aligns perfectly with our own goal. I also want to thank Solomon for their ongoing support, and I'll be working with a few nutrition brands throughout the season that I will be telling you more about as well. So I hope that you'll follow along. And let me know in the comments below what kind of adventures that you have planned for the upcoming season. Or if you have any ideas for events and destination runs that you'd like to see us document in the future.